I've been asked quite a lot, which one is the best career path? And we have three major options. We have the programmer, sometimes we call it software developers or developers. We also have the network engineers, sometimes we call it network admins. And we also have the system engineers, sometimes we call it sysadmins. How about cloud and cybersecurity? Well, we'll talk about their relationship in a bit. So my qualifications on doing this video is I experienced all three roles and we're going to talk about their advantages, disadvantages, which one has the highest pay, which one is the unhealthiest and who has the worst work life imbalance and also which one has the worst love life experience. And lastly, which has the maximum potential. This is again among the three career options. What I will share is just based on my experience, my thoughts. And this is for those who are new to IT to intermediate level because I didn't experience up to the expert level. Okay. Anyway, there is no right answer. So feel free to share your knowledge and experience for those who are new to this channel. Welcome. I am your host. Name is Dean Armada and I am career and certification captain. And on this channel, we talk about tech careers and certifications, trivia and tutorials in cybersecurity, trivia and tutorials in cloud and data center, and my journey as an IT instructor. So feel free to check out the rest of the channel and consider subscribing. Programmers, software developers, or software engineers. Okay, so we have two types. One or first, the one who builds, and the second, the one who maintains application. If you're working in a large company such as banking, airlines, insurance, most likely you will just maintain their applications. But if you are working in a startup tech company, more likely you will build those applications or build at least build part of that application. All right, so there is also a front end and a back end developer. So for those who are not familiar, front end, this is what the user sees. Back end, this is what's running behind the scenes. So there's a lot of happening back there. So there's a lot of communication from one application to another. Applications such as database, caching, messages, etc. And as a programmer, it's pretty intense. You will spend most of the time sitting and writing codes. Is it always coding? Well, it depends. I know a lot of programmers that do 100% coding. All right, there's one more. Some programmers slash developers, they call themselves full stack. When you say full stack, you develop both front end and back end. And you should also be familiar with other components. These components are the one who communicating with your applications. So sometimes you handle database administration, web server configuration, such as Nginx, managing containers, enabling automation, and many more. For those full stack developers who are also involved in administrating the cloud, they can be called full stack cloud developers as well. See, you have lots of responsibilities. Network engineer is a role where it involves implementing and managing network devices. And we have various network devices like routers, switches, WLCs or wireless LAN controller, application delivery controller or load balancers, and even containers and virtual networks. Network engineer job can be as complex as developers. And why is that? Because there are many network devices in many different network environments. First, we have the enterprise network environment where there's a lot of wireless and voice and video equipment. We also have service provider network, lots of routing and routers, internet backbone, etc. We also have data center networks. This environment, this involves lots of communication to the servers, applications, virtual and container environment. And there's a lot of automation as well. Sometimes you will hear the role full stack network engineer. What is it really? These are the network engineers who also manage servers, virtual machines, container, etc. Because network has evolved, it has extended down to the server level. Or sometimes full stack network engineer involves managing new technologies such as SDN or software defined networking, SD-WAN or software defined WAN, 
sometimes it involves security. They manage next generation firewall, next generation IPS, identity access and management, malware protection, and many more. System engineers, sometimes we call system administrators, or sometimes we call it server administrators. The role can be complex as well, and we have multiple types. We have the operating system focus, such as Linux specialist, Microsoft specialist, and VMware specialist. We also have solution focus. They work mainly with hardware, such as server chassis environment. They also work with storage, not just storage array, but the entire storage area networking and backup solutions as well. And this has also evolved to HCI or hyperconverged infrastructure. I know many system engineers or system admins do all of the above. They do both the management and operations. And sometimes we call this full stack system engineers. Not really popular though. Many system engineers or admins also know networking, not the advanced stuff. They don't work with BGP, MPLS, and things like that. In addition, some system admins are also cloud admins, or they are system admins shifting to cloud role. Actually, all three roles, the network engineer, programmers, and the system engineers, are qualified to be cloud administrators, but I really believe system engineer skills have more advantages and more related to managing the cloud, especially VMware with Linux skills. Let's compare all three. This will be fun. All right, so the disadvantage of programmers slash developers are first, valuable certifications are not available unless you move to cloud development or application security. So if you compare to the other two, these guys, those programmers, developers, attends very less training and certifications, again, one of your weapons to build a successful IT career. Second, most of the time, programmers sit all day coding. You think a lot, you get crazy and you get ugly too. No or less exercise, very unhealthy in your day-to-day -day environment. Result is, you will die young. And if you have the opportunity, accept the management role. Network engineer disadvantage. If you work in a NOC or network operation center environment, it's equally unhealthy because you sit all day. Plus, you work on shifting schedule. But you don't think always. There's a lot of idle time. Some people use those idle time for learning or do some labs or watch videos and play video games. Here is, I believe, one of the biggest disadvantage of a network engineer. The blame is all yours. If the application is not working, blame the network engineer. If the server isn't working, blame the network engineers. If the service provider internet is down, blame the network guys. So in short, network engineers are always guilty until proven innocent. System engineers or the server guys. I believe it's almost the same as the network engineers. They either do the implementation or operations. Implementation involves more on provisioning new servers and storage devices. Operations is more on monitoring, troubleshooting, backing up files. There are also some idle times just like network engineers. Like network engineers, they need to upgrade those hardware such as servers, storage arrays, backup solution, etc. What's the real disadvantages of system engineers? I will tell you in the next slide. Let's talk about a little positive side. If you have built a popular application or apps, I think it really sounds cool, especially on the perspective of non-technical people. But, but those programmers, those developers have very less or no life or love life. Most of them are weirdos and psychos as well. All right, network engineers, especially those pre-sales, those who designs, who does less configuration and also the consultants has more life, more interaction to people, more walking and more traveling, more exercise to those who implement the hardware, especially uh, hardware such as switches, WLCs, uh, routers, etc. System engineers, especially those who consults, who designs, who does less configuration, also has more life, 
yeah, more interaction to people, more walking and more traveling, especially to those system engineers who go back and forth to the data center. Now, switching to cybersecurity, hmm, I would say the system engineer, especially those who specialize in Linux, has definitely the most advantage. More promising career in mid-level. If you use your certification advantage, I would say those network engineers. Can you imagine if you have multiple CCIEs with cloud specialization? Of course, you'll get a lot of opportunities. Here's the conclusion. If you want to be super wealthy, billionaire level, the maximum potential of programmers is you build applications, your own app, and millions of people use it and you become a techpreneur. Now, for system engineers or network engineers, it's very rare for them to build an empire, you know, multi-million dollars tech business. All right, so the average salary of a software guys uh, from a giant tech companies, let's say Google, Facebook, Amazon, it's 250,000 a year, and it can be up to 500,000 annually. Some giant tech companies, their network engineers or system engineers, I would say the maximum would be 250K up to 350K only. If it's non-tech giant companies like large banking and you're really that good, like the expert level. All right, so developers versus network engineer versus system engineers, I would say the salary would be close. System engineers will probably get the list. All right, so network engineers, the advantage is I would say more opportunities on the vendor side because there are more network vendors. We have also telcos. If we go to the network companies such as Cisco, let's compare. So we have more opportunities for network engineers. Yes, we already know that, but believe it or not, software engineers or software developers still has higher average salary than the network engineers or system engineers. Now, the biggest disadvantage of system engineers is they always get the least salary among all the three. 